We got, we got something big here. Yeah. When you think about personal electrical vehicles, you tend to think of two of the bigger forms, e-bike and e-scooter. The entry level of learning how to ride a scooter is very easy, hence why they have the rentable scooters all over the place, giving people quick and easy access to transportation all over urban areas. Kukirin reached out to me to showcase how much easier it is to live on a scooter and how it can actually change your world and open up a more green-friendly way of traveling. With a scooter like this, I can see why it's much more fun to explore in your own area on a new form of travel. Now let's go ahead and dive into the specs, because this incredible scooter can actually go up to 43 miles per hour. Yeah, 43 miles per hour. First off, the look of the scooter is absolutely gorgeous, with the open stem up front, which we'll actually get to later on, the beautiful subtle hints of orange everywhere, it's just a good looking scooter overall. Let's talk about the overall specs list and we can break it down later. The size is 50.9 inches tall by 52 inches long by 25 inches wide. With a curb weight of 81 pounds, this is not a portable scooter. I actually opened this thing up and I didn't realize how large it was, but folding it up, it does actually allow you to pick it up and put it into a car per se, but I don't want to be carrying this thing five flights up a stair, I can tell you that much. It is very heavy. Oh, yeah, not light. Uh, at 81 pounds, this is not a small scooter by any means. And, you know, you got to be in some physical shape to go ahead and chuck this thing up on a table or put it up in a car. I definitely wouldn't want to be carrying this thing five flights up a stairs. It's not that easy. The, um, the one thing I will say is that the actual locking mechanism is a really nice, satisfying click. When you do lift this thing up, it does really lock into place there. I mean, that is a lot of bolts holding everything insecure. And again, one little tiny lever, kind of like pull that, there's a pin on this side, pull it out, kind of start bringing it back, there you go, back down. I just wish that they had a locking mechanism here that would keep it locked in place versus having to use this little dangly wire thing to wrap around the rear there and pick it up that way. Just wish there was another locking pin right here. I mean, this thing is so, so satisfying to hear you know that that's like definitely locked in place. With a standing platform of 8.6 by 20.8, it has a small tail on the rear here to place your foot when you're going up to crazy top end speeds, or if you want to do a wheelie. But it's definitely enough room for me to kind of hang out around in. Didn't find myself uncomfortable by any stretch of the means. It definitely is a nice platform to stand on. It's got this rubber grip to it. It is IPX54 waterproof rating, so it can take some splashes and whatnot. Again, I wouldn't be riding this thing in the rain or any electrical vehicle in the rain. That's just my personal opinion. Let's move down to the battery and talk about the 60 volt system, which is a 16 S8P 20 amp hour battery. This is claiming up to 43 miles of range, which is an insane number in my opinion for this price of a scooter. Now, I actually didn't get that. I am 220 pounds. I was mostly in race mode and kind of just pushing the scooter around as fast as I could because it was really enjoyable. But overall, I ended up with 32 miles of range, which I'm not totally dissatisfied with. At $899 with the discount code, it actually is a really good deal, in my opinion, for this style of PEV. With a single hub motor of 2,000 watts in the rear and three different speed modes that you can hit 12 miles per hour in eco, 24 miles an hour in sport mode, and up to 43 miles per hour in race mode. The single motor seems like it has a lot of top end speed for the price. Uh, I never got the claimed 43 miles per hour, but I still hit 37 miles an hour, which is pretty crazy on a full battery. With a claim of 20% hill climb capability, that kind of seems interesting because in the three different modes, I actually got up the hill with three different speeds. Eco mode really struggled though to get me up the top of the hill. Now with a nine mile per hour top end speed, I can see that you know, you're not giving the full power to the actual motor. In race mode, I blew up this thing and obviously in sport mode as well too, blew up this thing, no, no problem. So uh, the 20% Hill climb seems capable, uh, just obviously you have to flip it up into a higher mode to get yourself going up the top there. Why? Wow, yeah, electric scooters are weird. So we're getting to the top. We made it to the top. Six miles an hour, it's picking up a little bit. I call this uh, the top up here at the sign here. Eight miles an hour. Double click it, we're in sport mode. Go back down the hill, and back up the hill. 
but that made it. I'm actually surprised. You can, I don't know if you can see the gradient of the hill, and I'll find out what, how steep this actually is, but it's not, like I said, it's not incredibly steep, but it is also steep. But this is a typical neighborhood hill I would imagine anyone would have in a regular neighborhood, just kind of cruising up and down. Um, that was kind of interesting, though. I feel like even in Speed Mode 1, my like other electric skateboards are pretty quick to getting up that. So stand still, let's go. Full throttle. All right, so already off to a better start. 11, 12, 13, 15. Obviously the top end on this one is 25. Sport mode climbing up this hill. No issue, all right. Faith, faith instilled inside of an electric scooter. We obviously know race mode's gonna dominate this thing, but let's go ahead and try it anyways. Fall back to a stop here. And one mile an hour and full throttle. This is in race mode. 21, 22. Yeah, no issues. 23. Blazing to the top of this thing. Easy peasy. Okay. So that's actually uh, better than I better than I anticipated. Glad that worked out. It comes with a 2 amp charger which takes anywhere from 10 to 12 hours to fully charge and that is just a really long, long time in my opinion. Uh, even a 5 amp charger would greatly cut that back to like 4.5 to 5 hours. I suppose with 43 miles of potential range, you know, necessarily don't need to charge up as much but me only getting around 31 miles of range, I just like, I don't want to wait 10 hours to charge this thing up. So. That could be something that they could offer in the future is maybe just a little bit of a faster amp charger. So this is your entire handlebar and heads up display. The great thing is that it does come with two keys ignition inside of here. So you're able to leave that off, turn that on, take it with you, you don't have to worry about it. Crank it on, shows you all your information here. So Kukirin, your miles per hour. This is really cool because this is also an actual touchscreen. You can change different modes, kilometers or miles per hour sport mode, race mode. It also shows you your battery indicator. So I was 31 miles an hour or 31 miles of charge. It died on me. It was down to the last red bar and uh, I was going super slow. So I started charging it at work and it literally was about a bar an hour. There's 10 bars here. Obviously two amp charger charging a 16 S AP is a, it's going to take a long time. So it took a long time, like six or seven hours to get up to this bar here. Uh, I had to go home, so I took this home with me, so unplugged it, so we'll charge it fully up later on. But there are some really cool secret menus on here that if you hold down the set button, you'll see a little indicator turn on and off up there. Basically, this allows you to that uh, right now, you don't have to kick to push it. You can just push down the throttle here and this thing will take off. Or if you turn that off, no matter what you do, it won't until you kick it. Another thing too, if you hold down the mode, Cruise control. Now the cruise control icon is that once you hold this throttle down for like three or four seconds, it will actually recognize that you can let go of it and it will continue to cruise control. So if you just want to maintain the speed, or it may be say you're going on a long distance cruise, you're able to do that as well too. I prefer to have it the throttle ready to rock and roll so that when I do throttle down there, it's good. Now the other cool thing is focus over here, throttle. The good thing about throttle is that it's not only just this thumb throttle, it's this whole entire mechanism here for purposes here is that you can throttle it down with this but then you also have like this grip here that if you wanted to do it with your hand you could do it with your hand as well too so I kind of do like a combination of the both I really just like having my index finger and my thumb being able to kind of really throttle that in there you have a button on here too which you tap it once turns your light mode on double tap mode so a lot of different features that you actually don't even need to use the touch interface on here which I really haven't been using the touch interface at all I would turn it on and off and switch the different modes by double clicking on here. It's, uh, it's a little bit gimmicky, but at the same time, cool feature, I guess. But at the same point, uh, it's really kind of hard to read in direct sunlight. So with direct sunlight, uh, this is just super bright and you really can't see too much about it. You got your brakes on here too, disc brakes, great. Going over to this side here, you have actually turn indicators. So your left hand turn indicator, which is really nice. Right hand turn indicator, it also shows you on there too in case you forget it while you're riding. Put it back in the middle, and then a little electric uh, horn. <laughs> it's something, so we can't complain about that at all. 
When you start moving the scooter, it actually goes into a pedestrian or walking assist mode where a little tiny green icon shows up of a person walking, the four indicators turn on, and it seems like it almost assists you a little bit while walking, so it's not like you're pushing the entire thing by yourself. Now let's go ahead and talk about Ride Feel. There is a suspension. It has two coilover shocks with four pivot arms. You can actually adjust the tension on the suspension, but I found that I still would bottom out by hitting just random objects in the road or even like potholes almost at any speed. It did cushion the ride very nicely overall, but they honestly could beef up the suspension for heavier riders. I know this thing maxes out at 265, and me being 220 pounds, I'm pushing the threshold, but again, if you're gonna offer a suspension, maybe just offer it a little bit beefier. Now the tires on here are 11 inch tires and they are great, awesome grip on the road and can handle some off-roading as well too. I did find though overall in taller grass because of the single hub motor and maybe it was more that I was putting in more throttle control than I wanted to, that it was kind of a little squirrely off-road, but overall still a great ride feel. It also does have front and rear disc brakes, but they felt really soft at full aggressive. Again, a heavier rider when I was cruising really quickly, coming to a quick stop was kind of hard, and there was an almost of a squeaky noise after heating up after a little bit, but overall they stopped. They were great, and disc brakes, thumbs up. All right, so is the Kukirin G4 for you? And I honestly don't know that answer. I think for the price, it is a lot of scooter for what you get for. I mean, massive battery, 2000 watt single hub motor, dual shock suspension, just a really fun interface up top there. Touchscreen's kind of like gimmicky because you can do a lot of things without it, but at the same point, just a fast commuter scooter. So if you are a younger kid, maybe a lighter weight rider at 220 pounds, I wasn't getting the top end speed that they're recommending at 43 miles an hour. I never hit that speed. My top end was like 37, 38. And then as the battery depleted, that speed dropped down too. That's typical of all batteries. That's on any other PEV as well too. But uh, you know, in that lower range of four to five bars, I was only going out at 30, then less and less and less. Or $900, you're getting a battery that could probably take a lighter rider well into the 30s and 40s even. Me, probably the top end of the 20s, low 30s. If I was in sport mode most of the time, kind of feathering it through. I would say that for the, a lot of the tests here, I was doing a lot of race mode and uh, I loved it for that reason alone. But at the same point, you know, it's, uh, it wasn't really going for range. I was going more for speed, kind of what I've enjoyed it with it. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping this. I'm gonna be hanging out with it. Uh, the wife wants to ride around. So we're gonna go ahead and just put this in our arsenal and uh, keep testing it, you know, just kind of enjoying it. And who knows, if you guys enjoyed this kind of content, scooters and stuff like that, go ahead, leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I mean, are you someone that would pick up a G4 from Kukirin? Are you uh, someone that would ride a e-skate or any other PEV? I mean, I'm really here to, to just get everyone out of a car and onto something. I always say there's a board out there for everyone, but maybe there's a PEV out there for everyone. And a scooter is definitely a really fun option. So until next time, guys, remember, always wear your helmet. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.